name is Varnika Gupta and this presentation today is part of I Am The Future series wherein we are speaking with various business leaders at Infosys and today I have with me Hema Prem Raina, VP Insurance Europe. Welcome to your story Hema and thank you so much for being a part of the series. Thank you Varnika, it indeed is a pleasure and an honor to be here today. Uh, Hima, very excited to know more about your journey. Let's begin by understanding what have been some of the enablers, some of the qualities that you feel have really proved very useful for you and very, you know, that they've enabled you in this journey so far. I can't point out at one or two of these qualities, but I think inherently uh, the deep belief that I always had that inculcated, right? I think that's one of the most important one that I have seen. And of course, um, adding to that is... Uh, the whole amount of credibility, right, in terms of building your own credibility through your content, in that sense, and then and then and then again, being fearless, right? What would happen at best, right? Being fearless truly as are some of the key qualities that have helped me where I am today. Uh, can you also tell us about probably some of the experiences or influences that you would have had, uh, you know, during your formative years that have helped you develop these uh, qualities and you know, develop this personality that you have today? Uh, of course, <laughs> I actually should uh, certainly thank some of these, um, um, you know, challengers, I must say, they're my silent motivators. The moment some of these important characters, right, they kind of come and say that, look, this is not possible. Why can she do this? Or why should she do this? I actually thank them silently. They have been the key motivators for me to actually do and prove them wrong, right? So I think those have been some of the very interesting experiences. For example, Growing up, um, you know, um, that time was a time when we were all learning computers and computers era as such. One of our neighbors, he came to my dad and he said, hey, why do you want to teach her computers? Why don't you just teach her some typing so it becomes easier? Maybe she can get a quick job. And that is when was one of the key um, incentives for me to actually learn computers and get into computer science engineering. And, and, and I'm, I'm very proud of what I've done at that point in time. And uh, uh, do you also remember some of the some some more of these experiences where these uh, when these silent motivators of yours were at play? A number of them, I must say, and I think uh, you will have them and face them through and through your career as such, right? At every stage in your careers, um, one of them was um, when I had, in fact, when I was in my engineering, I did see one of these uh, notice boards which basically said, "Join the army." Right. And then somewhere there was an asterisk or something which said only for men, for instance. Right. And then um, that was the motivation for me. I literally took help of my dad and wrote to the headquarters in Delhi at that point in time. And then that was the first time they had opened up this um, this entry for Indian defense in that, that, that point in time. It was for the Indian Navy. Right. And that was one of the key motivation for me to actually get into the Indian Navy through short service commission as well. So some of these not necessarily they have to be people who have to be silent motivators. Some of these are it was just an advertisement that was actually enough for me to kind of say, hey, why can't I do it myself? Right. So this was another anecdote. Likewise, I still recollect when I had joined early years in one of my organizations. Um, I was literally challenged, um, right, and said, hey, look, it's very difficult to win these awards. It's like it's supposed to be like the Oscars of the company. So that was really put me down so badly that I said, look, let me try. Let me fight for it. And then three consecutive years, I still recollect how we as a team and we as a group actually made it happen. Right. So I think it is about that winning spirit. That is about that believe in yourself. Right. I think these are a few of the things that truly um, help me and you know I motivate my own self in that sense. So you know how how did this winning spirit and this you know this uh, solid belief that you have in yourself develop? Uh, were, uh, were there some early influences at home? Were you influenced by some friends, family? What can you tell us about that? It's been through and through the journey I must say. For instance uh, growing up first starts with my own grandmom the lady that she has been in those formative years, I think um, I haven't seen a woman who has a lion heart like her. She could travel villages all by herself and the confidence that she has raised her own son who is my dad, right? And I think um, absolutely, hands down, the kind of, and I'm, I'm hoping and I'm, I, I believe that I have some of her genes, 
So that really starts from her. Uh, then, of course, my dad. And in fact, men and such as such have been such great allies in my own world, right? Starting with my dad, who, who, who ensured that, you know, I'm exposed to a lot of uh, experiences in that sense. He never, he ensured that he was the wing beneath my wings. So, so every opportunity that he provided to unpeel details, learn, relearn. And he was always the, the person who said, it's okay to fail. It's okay. I don't care if you get your first rank and stuff, right? It is all about how do you get up from failure and keep running, keep marching, keep going, keep your confidence bright in your own eyes, keep believing in yourself. And that was the biggest motivation for me uh, from my dad, right? And then, of course, uh, my husband, um, Ajay, Again, the companion that he has been. If I'm anything today, I truly give it to these two men in my life as such. Uh, Hema, you know, like you, you were speaking about this whole concept of the, that you've had uh, enough cheerleaders, men as allies and others who you've looked up to, you've, you've inspired by. Uh, but how have you then use this experience and uh, you know these experiences and influences to inculcate leadership qualities in yourself to you know ensure that you provide the same level playing field to others who work with you when i spoke of my dad and my husband that's more from a family standpoint but when it comes to work it is some of these key leaders right who has actually provided that uh, ecosystem they've fostered this culture of creating leadership right as such an inclusivity in leadership for example our president mohit joshi and he has constantly been that guiding light i must say right likewise few other leaders within my own organization uh, beyond this if i look at it in terms of my role as well my role has actually provided me a platform so that i can talk to um, the Brits, the Americans, the Dutch, the French, name it, without any barriers of nationality, without any barriers of countries, of language, of content, I'm able to connect to all of these leaders across the board. So what's happening is each of them have actually provided me with such guidance, such brilliant guidance, that I'm able to kind of navigate through various conversations, through various meetings, and hence, I'm also able to learn some of the best practices from each of them. So I think to your point, I have ensured that personally, uh, one, I speak up. Number two, I ensure that I provide the opportunity for teams to kind of play to their forte. And that's how I kind of build myself and, of course, trying to uh, build whatever I can, right, from a, from a team standpoint. I started my career, for instance, in Boston um, as a business analyst. And I still recollect there's this gentleman called Bill Paulson. And um, the way this gentleman actually helped shape my learning and the introduction to the IT industry and introduction to clients and client conversations and relationship building, I am um, ever grateful and indebted to him, for instance. And then I decided to... Uh, Come back to India at that point in time and go on to do my PhD. And again, that was such an interesting experience. I was very much in the office. It was literally a lunch break. I said, hey, let me go and do my interview. So this was very much in Bangalore. Uh, so I literally took my little kinetic, went to the Institute, Indian Institute of Science. And the kind of uh, brilliant exposure that I've had at Indian Institute of Science itself to do my PhD at that point in time. Uh, was brilliant. It took me about four years, uh, but most of the time I ensured that I am connected to the industry because I knew I want to come back into the industry again. So the kind of work that was sponsored by Intel, by SAP Labs, um, I think that was again very, very enriching. Um, and, and there was a point in time when I decided to quit my PhD or basically I was at my lowest point because I was doing some research, some work, and it was already after two years, we realized it's already similar work is being done somewhere in the world, some corner of the world. So I was like, forget it. Right. And then that was a time I actually also met my my husband there. Right. He was my he was my classmate, my senior. And um, I said, OK, fine, let me carry on. Right. And that's when I then finally landed after the end of four years or the fifth year, I actually landed in getting a gold medal for the best PhD thesis in management as well. Um, of course, the and, and of course, then with emphasis and through emphasis here in London, the kind of exposure that I have across the globe through these clients that I have, whether it is the UK, France, Benelux or the US or in, across APAC, across the regions, I think 
the region, the, <laughs> like I said, I'm truly uh, thankful to my company, um, Infosys. The leadership has actually invested quite a bit in me. The confidence they have had in me, the opportunities that each of the leaders have provided to me, right from uh, all the leaders in corporate to leaders in my own uh, financial services, healthcare, insurance unit. I think there is no looking back. There's so much one can do, really. It's all about how do you ask and when do you ask and how much you can do. It is all about your drive. Uh, there have been a number of learnings. There have been a number of groups that I have actually been with. Right? I started my journey with this group called Infosys Labs. And there was this gentleman who was uh, managing this group right, uh, globally, Mr. Subhu Goparaju, my early motivators. So, um, in fact, I do recollect there was this role called IP commercialization. And this role, I, I literally went up to him and I told him, Subhu, why can't we create this IP commercialization role and based out of London and EMEA? We were all worried to whether even have this conversation with him, basically. So, but he liked this idea and so much so that he said, let's create this specifically in London and EMEA region, right? So, and one key advice that he had provided me is, Hema, don't take no for an answer, right? Or don't be afraid of a no for an answer, both the ways. He kind of guided me on that, right? He said, as you progress in your journeys, it's okay if you find no as an answer, but, you know, just move on, keep marching. You have to be thick-skinned. So, I think that took me such a long way to start with. The second one is, there have been a few uh, of my own colleagues and all who, of course, did challenge me, right? Literally being telling me, oh, you want to do this role? Great. There are this whole delegation coming in, literally in half an hour or one hour. And I had no head or tail of what I need to do. But they said, go ahead and do it just because they wanted to challenge me. I said, fine. Nobody knows the content as much as I know. This delegation was coming, for example, for five minutes. And I was so worried. <laughs> but I said, let me go for it. I literally picked up the content, literally picked up key messages that I want to land. And that meeting literally was that platform that I had created for myself and said, Hema, go for it. So I think I started off there very naive, just challenging myself way too much at every given point in time. I was so hard on myself and I, I know that I was very hard on myself. So and a few takeaways I would certainly say is, you know, one doesn't need to be so hard on oneself when you think you need to ask help. It is so humbling to actually, in fact, a client, one CEO came and told me, hey, ma, it's okay to ask for help at times, right? So that is the other element. The third element is you can be a superwoman, but it is not a sustainable model at times. So just choose your priorities, right? Just choose where you want to be. And, you know, so I think there's some brilliant um, learnings. Right, so um, I was in a in, in a session, a panel discussion, just about a week or two weeks back, right? And that was about inclusion and diversity and topics of that sort. So I was uh, thinking to myself, you know, is that session important? And initially I used to think, oh, come on, yeah, there's everything. What is diversity, inclusion? I've never faced anything. What is this glass ceiling about? I used to actually not face, face any of these until you grow into the leadership position. So I used to really go and 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 pick up whatever I want to pick up and then get going on various initiatives. But now as I grow into senior leadership positions, do I face some of these um, so-called inclusion concerns? I do. I certainly do. Right. And, and that is a thing. But can I navigate those? I think I can. Can we make it easier? Absolutely. We can make it easier. Right. So so I think um, to your point, right, of course, there have been some key learnings. There have been challenges. Most important one that I've learned is not every conversation that you agree or disagree or basically every conversation that you disagree doesn't have to have a negative connotation to it. It's OK to disagree on something and understand our boundaries and move on from there. Right. You know, just going a little bit deeper on what you said, you said something very interesting with how you are, you know, tuning yourself again and again by looking at these people. Uh, can you can you tell us that, you know, was there was there a quality in you or not? Or was there anything, any aspect that you retuned to uh, in your leadership style? I think there is a very important lesson that I have been learning and consciously been trying to work on that it is not necessary that you only have to focus at the outcome that I have to get this numbers or I have to get this client or I have to get ABC. 
but how do I ensure that the journey towards the outcome also is equally pleasurable, for example, right? And hence, look at how do I create a vision for the team so that they see that outcome together and we see the same outcome with the same lens. So the moment I start working um, along with the teams to look at the outcome and the journey to the outcome using the same lens, that means all of them are truly bringing their individual best and bringing our collective strength. So that is how I kind of I'm 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 going on the, along on the journey. You are working towards developing certain qualities in your team also. What role do you think mentorship can play? And someone like you who is in a leadership position right now, how can they give back to the younger generation, to the aspiring professionals to do their uh, to bring their best version to work? It's extremely critical and it's important that we need to find those. Um, those factors which will continue to motivate you, that is one. And um, do, do they play an important role? Absolutely, they play an important role. Because this is an ever-changing world. It is an ever-demanding world. It is a, such a dynamic. We have to be, um, we have to kind of navigate. It's, it's, it's not about, uh, I always say this, right? It is not, it is about art of war, but it is not about a war really. It is a game of chess. So in our in our organizations or in our in our field, it is all about what is the next best move, right? And hence, in order to get where you are um, and to get where you want to get to, it is important that you get guidance at some point in time at or every juncture as such, right? And then it's a fine balance. So to your point, uh, absolutely, it plays an extremely important role. Way back, my early 1920s, right, uh, when I was uh, getting into the Indian uh, Navy, I was actually going through the short service commission examinations. And that was such a tedious set of, um, um, you know, um, evaluation process, I must say, right. In fact, uh, there were about 20, 24 different tests, I believe. So right from your um, aptitude test to your psychology test to oratory skills to GK skills to physical test and name it, right. And then at every place, there were junctures when if you don't perform, then the people, the candidates, right, are being sent back home, right. It was such an important phase. And so we were, we were about 30, 40 of us who are actually there at the dorms um, and, and going through this entire evaluation process. So I think finally we were four of us who got shortlisted in the country um, at that point in time, talking way back in 1998. I was called and said, hey, look, Hema, you have a temporary rejection. And they said, the reason I'm, I've got this temporary rejection is because I'm overweight by 22.5 kgs. And that was quite devastating for me at that point in time after clearing all the number of tests and literally coming to top right amongst the four in the country at that time so then i i literally requested the the group task officer and you know how bureaucratic at times it is in the organizations there and um and um i requested i meet the president of the academy at that point in time they wondered why i wanted to meet him but i was given the permission to go meet the president of the academy who was sitting in full glory with all the badges and then i said sir i need two minutes of your time so the confidence with which and that naivety with which i went and asked him he literally lifted his head and said please and he gave me a seat and he asked me what was the question so I did tell him I'm overweight by so much and I got a temporary rejection. But sir, this is a gift of God. And the way he listened to me and then he's, he, he, he actually looked into my eyes and said, look, Hema, this is a gift of your parents. Let me uh, immediately he gave me a relaxation. And then he gave it. He said, lose 42, uh, lose uh, five kgs in 42 days. Right. So this was one of the biggest children growing up. Right. I have always been a huge person as such. So but. The point is, how did I literally have bring my personality side, right, to, to kind of have these open conversations and dialogues that finally I got selected. I lost 6.5 kgs the whole of my university. I was sponsored a, a coach. My whole of my friends across the board uh, really helped me get through this entire journey. 42 days time, I go back on the weighing scale and I lose 6.5 kgs and I get through the Indian Navy. So I get that letter and I'm so, so proud of that, right? So I, so to your point, right, of course I faced a number of challenges and this is just one of the anecdote, right, or one of the examples. But how did I really try to navigate through that? 
uh, I think it was it was just luck, perhaps. But that is that this example truly helps me through and through my journey, right? At every given point in time. Uh, Hema, uh, what can anyone who's looking, you know, who's probably listening to this interview right now, what can be their key takeaways from your journey? What can they learn from uh, your journey? What can they imbibe in their own uh, journeys and their own selves for them to excel in the corporate world? The first thing I would certainly recommend is, look, uh, you will face hurdles. You will face a lot of challenges. You will face a lot of people who will who will probably comment or who will say, hey, this probably is not a good idea. So, so my point is keep marching. Come what may, keep marching. It's all right. Right? That is the first. The second one is, I would say, identify one or two. Right now, it is nothing like a T model. It is a pie model. Identify at least two areas. You don't be a generalist, but at least two areas where you are literally the best and I don't, I'm not asking people to be the best in everything, just one or two areas and be the best in it, right? And so that nobody can beat you in this, those one or two areas as such. So that content. And the third one I said is keep building your credibility, right? Extremely important that, um, you know, one can just get lost with the num amount of distractions that one can have. So I think this could be my three things. And the final one I would truly say is, and this has happened to me again, to one of your previous questions, Usually people will not create any platforms for you, right? Please go find your platform. If you don't have a platform, wear your heels, but do that. Find your platform and bring your chair near to the table, whichever it is, get your chair there. I think it's important we have to do it. You will not, nobody will be here to really provide that for you as such. Thank you so much for uh, these lovely insights, uh, Hema. I'm sure everyone who's listening in had so much to learn from your journey, to learn from your experiences. And to everyone who tuned in, thank you so much. Keep watching this space for more such interviews. Thank you. Take care.